enough uh, six afternoon practices that will be regular afternoon practices as I mentioned last time uh, we, 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 uh, we were together that we were starting to get into situational work <laughs> and have had two red zone score zone days and you know which you know third downs are kind of the same the same deal as uh, red zone score zone so started to introduce a lot of the situational stuff uh, uh, started to introduce a lot of the tempo stuff obviously in the big 12 we're gonna have to not only be able to play fast which is what we like to do offensively but we have to be able to defend that as well so uh, in addition to the situational stuff and uh, uh, we started doing a lot of tempoing and defending tempoing which puts uh, people in situations that they have to think quick and they got to be able to react um, and we have a long ways to go to uh, be functional offensively, defensively when it comes to a tempo. So um, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, you know, still a lot of position battles that are that are that are ongoing, that will be ongoing all through this week. Uh, not making any decisions on any of the starters or any of that at this point. We want to, you know, anytime you have six more practices in a whole week of a week of camp, then things can change pretty pretty drastically. Uh, guys have good days. Guys, guys have bad days. Uh, you know, you're looking for guys that consistently can put a couple of good days together, which uh, we're starting to figure that out, who those guys are. And if the guys have a bad day, then they need to, they need to regroup pretty quickly if they want to be in the hunt for a, for a starting job or a, or, a, or a backup role. So that's where we're at, happy with where we're at, so open it up to some questions. David, besides quarterback, what other just positions do you think are the biggest questions in your mind in terms of battles? Uh, core. Uh, you know, as, as we've talked a lot about corners, you know, corner play, uh, you know, Travis Bell's transitioned, I think, very well. Uh, Icky Banks is, is playing probably as good as anybody. Um, you know, uh, Daryl Worley's a guy that's got a tremendous amount of upside. You know, Avery Williams is coming off of a year, a year's worth of, uh, of, a, of a neck injury, so he's getting better every day. Brandon Napoleon's maturing. Um, you know, Broderick Jenkins is kind of the, the veteran of the group, whether he can hold the younger guys off or not. So I think we got six quality guys there that, that, that need to continue to get better. Uh, you know, playing in the Big 12, the, the, the receivers are good. Uh, lost a lot of good ones last year, and everybody's like, the Big 12 is, is minus a lot of star power. Well, that's not true. They just nobody knows who they are yet. Uh, the Big 12 is going to have plenty of receivers that can that can play, and that, that's a position that's 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 challenging, you know. So we got to get guys that are confident and obviously better than what we we're playing with last year. Uh, safety, I think we're fine. You know, bad, but, you know, the, 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 everything else is, you know, you can say well, receivers were were we got a lot of bodies there, but uh, it's the same thing at receiver as it is at corner. You know, you got to find out who the guys are that are ready to take the next step. Don't know who that is yet. your offensive line and how are they uh, shaping up and and is, is is anybody asserting themselves at center yeah Tyler Olowski's really doing well uh, he's got the upper hand right now um, uh, you know we, we uh, we're, we're playing about 10 bodies on the old line uh, you know so you know would be 11 if we had Panky but he's a ways away um, He's kind of got the upper hand at center right now. You know, it's 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 between him and and uh, you know Matteo uh, is the two that are taking the majority of the reps. And you're talking about two redshirt freshmen there, so uh, both of them have a lot of growing to do. Tyler's probably a little bit ahead right now physically. Is Stone Underwood not ready? Well, he's in the guard. Uh, it, it's it's tough to come in at center. And, and and without any without a spring practice without a year under your belt it's tough to come in at center because physically the game's different here than what he's used to and then uh yeah the added pressure of making the calls the added pressure of snapping and then uh the, you know as well as just the physical battle that you got to play each and every snap i mean it's hard so um, he's got a red shirt here. We may use it. Don't know yet. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out here down the road. But we moved him to guard just because we needed another guard body in the second, on the second team. And, and, you know, physically he's doing some good things. So he's making progress, but I uh, felt like he would make more progress for us right now at guard rather than center. 
you said something earlier. You said Big 12 is, isn't is minus star power. You just don't know the guy's names yet. Do you kind of feel the same way about your team? Do you yeah, absolutely, absolutely I do. Um, you know, how, how are we going to score a point? I've been talking to our guys all this all the time. How are we going to score a point without the – three of the best players that ever played the game here. I mean, and, and they were. I mean, you know, obviously, Studman and Tavon, between the two of them scoring whatever 40-some touchdowns last year was was obviously pretty good. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't have guys on our roster that, can, that can't score touchdowns. So, uh, Big 12 lost a lot of receivers in the NFL last year, you know, so. Uh, there's some guys probably waiting in the wings or maturing or developing that we just don't know who they are yet. And yeah, I say that about our guys too. I think we got some guys that are going to develop into pretty good players. Thoughts on the dis- dis- decision making from your quarterbacks? Where are they at right now? Uh, I would say Paul uh, makes the best decisions and the worst decisions. Uh, he, he's he's got the most reps. He's taken the most reps. He, he he's he's pretty comfortable. Uh, he'll still do some bonehead stuff. I uh, guess they all do. I mean, anytime you got inexperienced guys that don't have a lot of starts under their belt, then they're going to make you know some good decisions and some bad decisions. Uh, Ford, Ford continues to get better. Had, had his best day on Saturday that he's had since he's been here. Uh, you know, we took I think about 45 live reps uh, from. The red zone in, moved the ball, and, and he, he had his best day since he's been here. Made some really good decisions, some good throws, and the right situations to get the ball in the end zone. Um, Clint, Clint's got presence to him. You know, he, he every rep he takes, he gets better. So, um, you know, does some good things. They, they, they all make good decisions at times, but because of inexperience, makes poor decisions that get him in trouble. Um, the, the guy that probably reduces the poor decisions will be the guy that uh, that that wins the job because I think they're all capable of being pretty good. You say Paul makes the best decisions and the worst decisions, which kind of leads you to believe that maybe he's kind of a risk taker. Is there a fine line there between trying to eliminate those mistakes and curbing his aggressiveness? There is a fine line. Uh, you know, because the, the the Texan Texas gunslinger mentality. I mean, you don't throw for four thousand five hundred yards in a, a senior season without not being able to take some risks. So, but you don't, you don't want to handcuff them either, because if you handcuff them and not give them the ability to be able to make decisions and pull the trigger, then that's they're going to play. They're, we don't want to get them to the point to where they're 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 afraid to make a mistake. I mean, that that's not what we do offensively. So. Uh, we we, uh, we point out the bad decisions and say you should have done this instead uh, because we you know obviously if you take make some make some risks or make some decisions and they result in turnovers then you're not going to win football games um, and and that that's that's the start that's the start I mean the quarterback that that doesn't make the bad decisions and turn the ball over is going to be the guy that has a chance to um, you know be the guy. I think that's probably the same each and everywhere that, you know, I don't care what offense you run, I don't care where you're at, the quarterback that takes care of the ball and puts the guys in position to be successful are guys that are going to be your quarterbacks. Dan, along those lines, Ford hasn't played, and for, I guess for lack of a better phrase, he doesn't know any better, so he's going to let it loose because he hasn't had a negative side of some things. Can that be a good thing for him in this? Because rather than him thinking or hesitating, he'll let it go and maybe it works, maybe he learns and maybe he only makes a mistake once. Well, you, you can figure that out in practice, I think. I mean, just because he hasn't played in games yet, I think, you, 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 you know, Paul's limited um, experience that he has in games. Uh, Clint's played in just a handful of games, you know, so he's got limited experience in games, especially in our offense. So I think them all the same. I don't, I don't give, you know, any of them the upper hand uh, to win the job based on whether they've played in a couple of games or whether they haven't played in a couple of games. I've said since day one that the guy that produces and plays the best in the practices and the situations that we put him in is going to be the guy that we go with come game one. So I I, I don't take anything um, in account for what's actually happened on games uh, for the last couple of years. 
it's all based on what they do in these situations that we put them in. How much is installing or introducing tempo? How much is that sort of things out? And if yeah. that guy who physically can make all the throws and the decisions, but he's not as good as tempo, would you favor somebody who maybe isn't as good with the throws and decisions but has a handle on the tempo? It, it, it will play. It will play. It will play some. You know, in, in making the decisions. I mean, when you go fast, if you're able to handle it without, you know, forgetting things or. You know, making poor decisions, yes, that does bring some things to light. Uh, and what can continue to put him in those situations here this week. Dan, you talked about the Texas gunslinger attitude or whatever. You spread the field, you throw the ball a lot. Do you consider yourself a conservative coach, though, rather than a gunslinger type coach? Because of the. Or compared to who? Uh, compared to someone maybe that. Uh, can't give you a name, but right. if throws the ball down the field maybe more, or maybe he does revert. Yeah, I, I, you know, these taking chances, taking those kind of chances. Do you do that at much, or do you? Yeah, I'm taking a few chances. Uh, you, you know, I mean, we're, we're uh, you know, everybody get asked all the time what kind of offense you run. I don't really know, really. I mean, is it the air raid? Is it the spread? Is it, you know, you running the ball more? I shoot, I don't know. Whatever works. You know, if it works, do it again. So, you know, we're, we're, we're continuing to evaluate our personnel. Uh, we did move Garrett Hope to fullback. Uh, you know, Eli Wellman's doing really good. Uh, adjusted to the game pretty good. But he, he's he's much like Cody where, um, you know, he's, you, you tell him to go block on, you know, block back on the defensive end, he'll do it 48 times in a row for you and crack his, his head open if you, if you let him. So... We moved, uh, we moved Garrett uh, there to be able to alleviate some of that. So we want to be physical. We want to run the ball. We want to be able to spread it out with four and five receivers and throw the ball. Um, you know, how much we do of each and every one of them kind of depends on what kind of success that we're having. So our, our offense can look like an old school pro style offense at times, but it can also look like a, a air raid, spread it out, play with tempo sort of thing. So I think you got to figure out what you're good at and just uh, – you know, kind of start focusing on that. And I, I haven't figured that out yet. <coughs> Danny, you mentioned Garrett Hope and uh, Stone Underwood. Have you moved anybody else around that you can think of? No. Uh, other than maybe like inside backer to outside backer or inside receiver to outside receiver, uh, n n nothing drastic from offense to defense or, or, or vice versa. And have you given much thought as to what the eighth official will do in regard to how you want to go tempo-wise because it would seem as though that's going to allow you to go quicker? It will. It will. And we experimented it with it in, in the, I don't remember if it was a spring game or if it, it may have been the spring game or one of the scrimmages prior to the spring game. They, they brought their crew. The Big 12 brought a crew, and we had the eighth official out there. And I was out there, if you remember, too. I was out right behind the quarterback, calling sacks, and um, and so I was kind of watching how it unplayed, you know, how it was in, in uh, the 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 back judge or the who's the guy behind the the quarterback? Is he the back judge? I always get those guys mixed up, but the referee. The referee? Okay, yeah, you guys know more about the. I, I ignore these guys, but the guy that's that's sitting behind the quarterback, the guy that usually spotted the ball. I mean, I felt so bad for that guy at times over the last couple of years because, you know, he'd have to hold it or he was getting out of there and we're snapping it, and then he can't sit there and focus on what's going on, you know. So watching it in the spring, and we tempered a good bit uh, that specific day, whether it was the spring game or the, or the previous one, he was just back, and, he was, and I was talking to him the whole time. He's like, man, this is going to be great because – he can, he, can, he can help dictate when there's subs, when there's not subs, if the guy needs to get out of there, uh, focus more on false starts, focus more on misalignments, have his wits about him as far as protecting the quarterback or holding calls. I think it's just going to be more efficient. Um, from a tempo aspect, is it going to allow us to play faster? I felt like you could play pretty fast regardless if there's seven out there or eight out there, but I think they're going to make better decisions. It'll help them make better decisions. Fully support it. How's that going to work for non-conference games? I, I, I don't think it will affect anything that we do trying to snap the ball, trying, you know. I mean, we're still going to play the same game that we always play. 
but when we're in conference, I think we're going to see that they're going to make better decisions because they're going to have their wits about them, as opposed to being rushed and hurrying up and getting out of the huddle or whatever it is. So you think it's going to be more of a matter of efficiency, yes. officiating, rather than increasing the tempo because they're snapping some plays off within nine seconds in, in certain places. Yeah, I, I think you can do that regardless. I mean, they're, they're, the Big 12 allows you to do it. The SEC probably is going to be a little bit slower getting out from over the ball. You know, I think they can see pretty quick. I mean, I don't ever try to sub and go fast. I don't try to break that rule. I mean, if, I, if, if we want to tempo, then we're going to keep the people in the game. We're, as soon as it snaps over, they're going to know that they're going to hurry up and line up, and we're going to snap the ball as soon as we can, which will be, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15 seconds. Um, that, to me, is easy. Um, and I don't think it matters if there's seven or eight guys out there. But I do think that we're going to get better play. It's a great song, by the way. <laughs> when I put everything in the weight room, it just floods in here, and we can listen and enjoy it. I don't even know why they have these speakers in the corner over here. We just tell the weight room to play the music. We showed this video to our team this morning, too. It's a great video. Did I say it? Boys of Paul? Come on, yes, yeah, see that? Yeah. This is the, the very last uh, picture is Bear Bryant. You know, he says his team, he goes out there and he puts his hat on, he looks at the chalkboard, you know, final little thoughts before he goes out onto the field. And so I asked our team, I said, how many of you guys know who this last guy was? And about 10 to 15% of our team raised their hand. I go, you got to be kidding me. 85% of our team didn't know who Bear Bryant was. Just got to educate him. What do you think Bear Bryant would think of the football that you play? Uh, Sessa doesn't like it very much. But. Yeah, 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 it probably blows mine, probably. It's, it's quite a bit different. Yeah, it's probably probably quite, probably, probably pretty different, yeah. So. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, appreciate it, guys.